As the program chair for 2015, one of the most exciting things for me is I get to design a symposium. So I invited people that I want to hear from and that I want everyone else to learn from too. So it is called the Distinguished Speaker Symposium, the Art and Science of Science Communication. Um, I think everyone who does science, everyone at this meeting, is a science communicator whether they know it or not. So in my talk I was looking at the difference between science journalism and science communication. And I think science journalism isn't just about um, promoting science or celebrating it, but also questioning it, criticising it when necessary and acting as a watchdog as well as a cheerleader. Science isn't just about a stream of discoveries or results or breakthroughs, it is um, about debates within a field, it's about um, criticism, it's about um, people disagreeing with each other and it's about deep uncertainty and I think the public needs to know about this to understand what science is really like as a, as a process for discovering more about the world rather than just a series of facts or discoveries. Today I talked about my experience and my story as both a pre-viver and an e-patient. I told people you know, what those terms mean and how I struggled um, over time to make informed decisions as somebody who carried a BRCA1 mutation. My goal is to make sure that science is communicated effectively back to patients in a way that's practical and meaningful to us in ways that we can understand as the research evolves. To do that, I think we need to build better relationships with scientists and patient communities, but I also think we need to look at how we can make research more patient-centered and include patients in everything from the design of the research questions all the way through to the dissemination of results. One thing I really hope people um, took away from my talk is what it feels like to have something scary in your genome. I also hope that people understand that we, when we have closed data sets or proprietary data sets of our community's data, that holds us back not only from research, but it holds back the patient from being able to have clarity about their cancer risk. I really hope that attendees um, realize that um, journalists play an important role in uh, talking about science and, and um, science as it really is, warts and all. Um, and when we're doing our jobs well, um, this can actually help the public perception of science by showing it as, um, as an often uncertain and deeply human endeavor. One of the things that we do almost all the time is we as scientists believe in something called the deficit model, which is we think that if the public, they just have a deficit of knowledge. If we can help them understand the science, then they will act the way we think they should act. And we're seeing now in climate change, in synthetic biology, I work on autism, in vaccines and autism, <laughs> even if we give them lots and give people who are not scientists lots and lots of information, they still don't make the decisions the same way we would make them. So I think if it helps people think about everything that they're saying and how they can be more effective at getting their science across in all kinds of venues, I think then it will be worth it.